group's investigation focused on adaptation. Now, the most common form of adaptation in birds is done by Charles Darwin in the Galapagos Islands, where he focused on finches and the differences in their beaks. However, we chose to specialize and focus on different birds that are very extremely different. We chose to focus on toucans, flamingos, and hummingbirds. To focus our investigation and our experiment, we chose to use the investig investigation question, why do birds have different beaks? By the end of our experiment, students will be able to explain how birds' beaks help them adapt to their specific environments and the food sources around them. If we're going to talk about children's conceptions of our understandings and our, understandings and our experiments, we have to talk about their misconceptions as well. Young children often do not understand that different birds have different shaped beaks and why the be the, their beaks are different. They may think that all birds' beaks are the same shape, and they might think that if a bird's beak is not this shape, then it's not a bird. When it's understood that different beak species have different shapes of beaks, it is not often understood why. Explaining different birds have different beaks in order to adapt to the environments that they live in and obtain the food that they need to illustrate Need will illustrate for students that a beak's, bird's beak is more than just an appearance. They have these beaks in order for them to eat food. Two common misconceptions that children often have are that animals can choose their adaptations or that a animals' adaptations happen within their lifetime. This makes clear to students that no birds cannot choose their beaks. The fork is going to represent a flamingo's beak. We're going to see how many berries the flamingo can pick up. Go. Stop. In 10 seconds, the flamingo obtained 10 berries. This clothespin is going to represent a toucan's beak, and we're going to see how many berries a toucan can pick up and eat in 10 seconds. Go. Stop. The toucan picked up 13 berries. The straw is going to represent a hummingbird's beak. We're going to see how many berries the hummingbird can pick up in 10 seconds. Go. Stop. Okay. The hummingbird obtained three berries. The fork is going to represent a flamingo's beak. We're going to see how many insects in water the flamingo can get. Go. Stop. The flamingo picked up 24 insects in water. The clothespin is representing a toucan's beak. We're going to see how many insects in water the toucan can pick up in 10 seconds. Go. Stop. The toucan picked up one insect. The straw is representing a hummingbird's beak. We're going to see how many insects in water the hummingbird can pick up in 10 seconds. Go. Stop. The hummingbird did not pick up any insects in water. The fork is representing a flamingo's beak. We're going to see how much nectar the flamingo can obtain. Go. Stop. The clothespin is representing a toucan's beak. We're going to see how much nectar the toucan can obtain in 10 seconds. 
Go. Stop. The straw is representing a hummingbird's beak. We're going to see how much nectar the hummingbird can obtain in 10 seconds. Go. Stop. From our observations, the flamingo obtained the least amount of water. The toucan was next in line and the hummingbird obtained the most amount of nectar. Different species of birds have different beaks that help them obtain the food that they need to survive. The fork was best at picking up the beans, the eyedropper was best at picking up the water in the cup, and the clothespin was best at picking up the mini marshmallow. Experiment, we came up with some evidence. We saw that the clothespin picked up 13 marshmallows, or what signified berries, one bean, which signifies insects in water, and the second most amount of water. We saw that the fork, which symbolized the flamingo's beak, picked up 10 marshmallows, or berries, 24 beans, or insects in water, and the least amount of water. We also saw that the straw picked up three marshmallows, no beans, and the most amount of water by far. What this shows us is that the clothespin, or the toucan, is most adept at picking up berries in its habitat. The fork, or the flamingo's beak, is most adept at picking up animals or insects in water, and the hummingbird is definitely more adept at picking up nectar or water substances. Our reasoning from our investigation. Certain tools could not work to pick up certain kinds of food sources. The fork represents the flamingo beak, the eyedropper, the hummingbird beak, and the clothespin, the toucan beak. The flamingo beak was best at obtaining insects and water, the hummingbird beak was best at obtaining nectar, and the toucan beak was best at obtaining berries. Because certain bird beaks cannot work to consume certain kinds of food, different species of birds live in different regions that they adapt to to consume the food in that region that best suits their shape of beak. Both the unbeatable beaks and the survival skills lesson plans helped us to organize our own lesson plan and gave us the ideas of the tools to use as representations of the three different bird beaks, the hummingbird, the toucan, and the flamingo. The picture book, Beaks, helped us to conduct our research by informing us of the food sources and the different shapes of beaks that the three birds that were included in our lesson plans have. The lesson plan, Can a Bird Build a Beak, helped us outline our learning goals and investigation question. It also provided information about children's common misconceptions about adaptations in birds.